Then you shall take this ring to remind you of your promise. You shall wear it when you find Eden. And when you return, it shall be your Eve. Together we will live forever. Welcome to another episode of Movie Reviews. My name is Daniela. And I'm Alfonso. Today we're going to review The Fountain, directed by Darren Aronofsky, who's also known for directing Requiem for a Dream, Black Swan, Noah, and Mother, among others. The Fountain tells the story of Tommy, a scientist that is desperately searching for the medical breakthrough that will save the life of his cancer-stricken wife. Ooh, mysterious. <laughs> very, very mysterious. What shall we start talking about? Cast and performances? Yeah, of course. Cast and performances. I thought Hugh Jackman and Rachel Weisz had a great chemistry. I love the acting of Ellen Burstyn, who is also in Raking for a Dream, right? As a mother. I have this idea of Hugh Jackman in my head. So sometimes it's hard to see him playing in other roles. But overall, I think the cast did a good job. I was said very like in love with the cast, but it was good. It's strange. I didn't love it. I didn't hate it. <laughs> so when you think of Hugh Jackman, you think of Wolverine, I guess? Yeah, of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah. I, I thought the cast was okay. Ellen Burstyn's scenes were, were pretty good. She's an amazing actress. Rachel Weisz did a good job. And Hugh Jackman basically had to portray three different roles, right? Mm -hmm. And for some reason, I didn't like him as the medic, as, as Tommy. Mm -hmm. Like his portrayal seemed a little bit fake, mm -hmm. but I, I liked it overall. Yeah, and speaking about these three different stories and these three different periods of time, what did you thought about the editing choices and the transitions of the movie? I love the editing and the transitions. I thought they were amazing. The film is full of match cuts, which make it confusing at times, but they work perfectly. Like sometimes it cuts from Hugh Jackman with a bald head to Hugh Jackman with hair. And you as the audience are like, what's going on? And then you realize that it's three different stories, three different timelines. And also the film is full of dissolves, which I really like. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I, I think I could talk more about editing, but I don't know. What, what do you think? Yeah, I really enjoyed the editing a lot, especially the bird's eye shots that led to another scene. I think I've seen that before in um, Aronofsky's movies, for example, in Raking for a Dream at the end of the movie, there is those bird's eye shots with all the characters. And I think this was clearly directed by him. You know, it was like his same style. And especially there were a few transitions that I can think of that they were like bird's eye and then they moved front and they transitioned to another time. Like for example, the Mayan empire that was visually very appealing. Yeah, it's such a such a Darren Aronofsky film, so easy to recognize. Yeah. I thought the same thing. It's It looks so similar to Requiem for a Dream, especially. Yeah, it looked very similar. Um, only a lot trippier. More <laughs> trippier, right? It took me a little bit to understand what was going on. You know, that first scene in, where he's in the Tree of Life and he's taking a piece of the tree. All of that just, I was very confused. Uh, but eventually the movies starts making sense. So what did, what did you thought about the cinematography? Again, I loved it. I, I think Darren Aronofsky is one of my favorite filmmakers in, tem in terms of technique. He's such an auteur. He has such a distinct style. It's hypnotizing. Like, I really like how he uses the push-in and then he cuts to a pull-out and then back to the push-in and then back to the pull-out. And I love that. So I, I don't think I have a favorite scene, but I have 
favorite shots. Mm -hmm. And one that I really liked, one that I loved, was this pullout when they show the Inquisitor torturing people. But it was so cool because it starts as a close up on the Inquisitor and he's talking about religion. And you think, like, okay, maybe he, this is a mass, maybe he's preaching the Gospels. And then it's this slow pull out. And then it reveals that there's these people hanging on the on the on chains and that it's an inquisition and that they're about to be tortured and, and die. I, I really like that shot. And I also like how he uses light and darkness. I, I saw an interview with Matthew Libatic, the cinematographer, and he was just talking about that, about the image system of, of light and darkness. The characters went from from dark to light, from shadow to, to light. Mm -hmm. And I remember this scene where when they're in the hospital and he's walking on the on the hallway and it's a, as if he's going through a tunnel towards the light. Mm -hmm. And then he reaches his, his wife mm -hmm. who is on the bed. And as soon as she dies, he suddenly is overexposed and he was mm -hmm. in the shadows all along. Yeah. So I thought that was really cool. His style is very particular and it takes you, like you said, from the characters from like different periods of his life, you know, like a roller coaster. They're like up and then down. And I think the storytelling of his movies really take you through all of that. And yeah, same. I loved it. Yeah. And I also know Matthew Lubatik has worked with Aronofsky in other movies. They've collaborated before, like in Raking for a Dream. Pi, also in Black Swan, and so I think their their styles complement each other very well. Yeah, that, I agree. They work really well together. And I also watched this interview with Matthew, where he was talking about how they also work very close to James Chindund, the production designer. So in some scenes, the position of the camera and the lighting was dictated by the set design. And I thought that was really interesting. What did you think of the whole production design, set design? Yeah, I really like the production design a lot, especially the Mayan Empire. I know that a lot was filmed in Guatemala, so I really felt the vibe of the, of the place and all of those scenes were really good, right? Like the Conquistador and all of that. Those were my favorite scenes in terms of production design, but I also like uh, the Tree of Life, the laboratory. But yeah, what did you thought about the production design? I thought it was good. The three different timelines have a very distinct look, and I really enjoy that. You already mentioned the Mayan Empire and the Conquistadors, and it looked great. The costumes, the pyramids, and in the contemporary timeline, the doctor's office and their, their houses. I thought it was very similar to Requiem for a Dream. It looked very sad and depressing. The furniture was very dark. And in the timeline of the future, the, the traveler, that was a, a great mixture of production design and visual effects. And I thought it was great. I also read that this film was supposed to have twice the budget. It was supposed to be a $70 million budget and they cut it in half to 35 million. And it looked amazing. Could you imagine how it would look with twice the budget? Yeah. No, I also <laughs> read that uh, the first movies of Aronofsky, I think one was like Rigging for a Dream. They had like a really low budget, but still I thought they looked amazing. And the, I think a big part also is the story behind it. It's very powerful. So it only makes all of it better. And something really important that we haven't mentioned is uh, music. What did you thought about that? I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just like with the editing and just like with the cinematography, it's full of motifs and it's very repetitive. And that's also very similar to Requiem for a Dream. It has this recurring motif. So... I like it. It's this repetitive violins all the way throughout the film. It's very hypnotic and it's very depressing at times, but I, it really, really works. 
I like the work of Clint Mansell. What do you think of the music? Yeah, same. I thought I thought about of Breaking for a Dream while watching this movie. I thought it was like similar kind of, you know, the violin and the repetitiveness. Yeah. And I liked it. It accompanies the, the movie and the story and makes it even more like dark and even more I don't know how to explain it. Yeah, it's it like they set up a great atmosphere and it's a very yeah dark atmosphere <laughs> yeah so i think clint mansell's music really represent this the obsessive nature of hugh jackman's character and he was a character obsessed with cheating death and he was so afraid of his wife dying and him dying I don't know what what do you think were the themes of the film? I think one was pretty obvious. You already mentioned it. I think it was the fear of death and accepting it and also about time because I think most of the movie Hugh Jackman tried to look for this cure that would save his wife of dying. And he wasn't really taking advantage of the importance that he was spending time with her. You know, he was, like you said, obsessed with finding this cure. It's very ambiguous. Like, it probably can be interpreted in many ways. And I kept thinking, okay, if I knew very well the Old Testament and if I knew very well the Mayan culture, I would enjoy this film far more but I feel like I don't have enough knowledge to grasp everything that, that Aronofsky was trying to say. So yeah, definitely death and rebirth or liberation through death was something he was trying to say. Mm -hmm. I think Hugh Jackman never accepts the death of Rachel Weisz until the end, as you said, mm -hmm. and that's when he gets liberated. And that's when they reach Shibalba and the star explodes and it consumes everything and new life new life starts. I thought it I thought it was cool that Aronofsky was showing us how every culture is obsessed with death one way or another, and every culture has their way of portraying immortality. I agree, and especially there's this one thing that came to my mind right now when he finally um, go goes past through the pyramid and finds the, the fountain and drinks of it. And instead of, I think what he thought that he was probably not gonna age, he just like started to be one with the earth, right? He started to become like grass and plants and they started growing. And I think sometimes, or for some cultures, that's why we thought, you know, like, about like reincarnation but like in natural forms like in animals or in plants and that was really interesting how they they said that yeah yeah i think it was mentioned by rachel weiss's character as well and the mayan creation myth and how when you die you feed the soil and then you become a tree and then you become a, a flower and then an animal eats the flower. So then you're flying with the birds and stuff like that. And that's very beautiful. Yeah, I think this movie was full of great scenes and great shots, but I think it's time for the truth. Alfonso, how would you rate this movie? This was a tough film to rate. I'm, I'm sure that a lot of the images are going to be stuck with me forever. And it made me feel something. I don't know what, but it definitely made me feel something. I would compare it to films like 2001 uh, Space Odyssey or The Tree of Life. And these type of films that you watch, you don't quite understand them, but, but they make you feel. So I like that. Okay, I'm going to rate this film with an eight, large popcorn. Excellent rating. What about you? What's your rating? Okay. I have to confess 
the movie was a little confusing at the beginning. Um, I almost fell asleep. I particularly had a hard time understanding the movie, especially with these jumps from time to time. But overall, technique, um, technically speaking, and all the things we've mentioned today, I really like the way Aronofsky tells um, the stories through filmmaking. So said that, I'm gonna have to rate this movie with a six medium popcorn. Okay, okay. It's understandable. <laughs> yeah. And so what's what's gonna be the film for next week? Okay, the movie for next week, and I'm really excited about this one, it's Eight and a Half by Federico Fellini. Cool, a classic I haven't seen. Yeah, me neither, and I'm really excited. So this was everything for today. Thanks for joining us for another video. If you enjoy it, please like, comment, and subscribe, and share with your friends and family. And we'll see you next Friday for another movie review. Thank you. Bye. Bye.